and actually I dropped something off the edge. It slid right off. So it took me a little bit of trial and error to figure out how to do this. You know, I also had to be realistic. We are two human beings. As you might know, I love making cheese boards, charcuterie boards. Um, I make them for all kinds of get-togethers. I make them just for me and my husband to eat. Um, we love doing our uh, Thanksgiving Eve tradition of having a cheese board for dinner. Um, today is actually Christmas Day, and I am about to make us one for our dinner tonight. So um, I always share photos of the boards that I create, and I think I've gotten a little bit of a reputation at least amongst my friends of being like the charcuterie board person um, a lot of people have been like asking me for tips and things on how to make them and I am not the expert I am the first person as I am not any kind of professional I'm not an expert on this um, you know I enjoy making them but I don't do like those super fancy photogenic ones that you see where like every nook and cranny is filled on a beautiful board. Um, I really just make delicious things that we enjoy eating. But um, just in the interest of kind of consolidating my knowledge, I thought that I would put together a quick video showing how I'm going to build this board tonight. Um, I have taken one online charcuterie board making class. It was actually just in the last year or so, so I've been making them much longer than, uh, you know, when I took that class. But so I did have like one piece of training. I will put in the video description links to a couple videos from a great channel where she actually is a professional I don't know if she's a chef or a professional like charcuterie board maker, but she has really great tips and how to's on like how to cut and serve certain types of cheeses, how to like fold the meats into different things. I don't do a ton of fancy stuff, but I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So to start with, I wanted to just show you a couple different types of boards and trays and things. Obviously, you can build this on anything. You could build it on a regular dinner plate. You could use your kitchen cutting board. You could use any kind of serving tray. Um, I have a lot of different serving trays, but I just pulled out a couple of trays and boards here that I've used previously. So, so this is just a small like melamine serving tray with uh, Rainbow Row in Charleston, one of my favorite places. This is very small. Small, but it's nice because it has handles and like a little bit of a lip to kind of hold things in this is gonna be a little small for what we're working with tonight uh, similarly this is a beautiful wooden kind of tray box that um, I got from a seller on Etsy I will try to link to their shop in the description here as well they have I think this is like the second biggest size that they make so they do like one smaller and then they do like one or two sizes larger than this um this actually is also probably a little small for what I like to do but um this is again just like a really nice uh you know handmade uh wooden tray and again it's nice that it has little sides that can help hold everything in this one is so cool. It was a gift from a friend. It's a beautiful bamboo board. It has these grooves along the outside that you could put like crackers in or you could put like grapes or things that would roll away. But the coolest part is that this pulls out and it is your cheese serving knives. And actually I believe then you turn, yeah, you turn this around and put it back in so it continues the groove but then you have access to the knives so that's really cool um again it's nice that it has this little groove to hold stuff in but um if i'm carrying this especially i try to avoid things that don't have any kind of edge to them just so stuff doesn't fall now this one is really cool I, it was also a gift and it has these kind of grooves in it because i think this was meant to be like a bread cutting and serving board but I have just flipped it over and used the flat side as a charcuterie board so I actually use this um, most recently for our Thanksgiving one and the only problem again is there's nothing on the sides holding things in and actually I dropped something 
off the edge. It slid right off as I was approaching where we were going to be eating. So uh, that makes me a little nervous. The handles are nice. The size and shape are like a little more unique than just a regular, you know, square or rectangular board. It's, I mean, it's pretty generously sized, but um, you know, it's a little dangerous because of the lack of sides. And then finally, I'm sort of embarrassed to admit it. This is like a plastic serving tray that I think came when we ordered some sandwiches or something once, like deli meats. So it's meant to be a disposable tray. And I was like, oh, this is nice, I'll just keep it. I have had this now for years. I live in fear of the day that it will crack or break because it's so perfect for all kinds of cheese displays. It's a really nice, generous size. It's just plain and white so it doesn't you know have like a lot of competing you know like the print on this one there's you know it's just nice and simple um you know it has a little bit of a lip like a like a plate would um and it's nice and lightweight like i've taken this places you know to other people's homes and things to set up charcuterie so i love this one i would love to have a similar thing in like a little more substantial not uh, disposable <laughs> format but this is the one I'm probably gonna use tonight just because we have a ton of stuff that I want to put out here so if you want to make a cheese board or a charcuterie board I always say like as long as you put delicious things on it that you enjoy it will be a good board um, and obviously like people make boards out of all kinds of things now there's like breakfast boards dessert boards um you probably have seen the butter boards which like i think are kind of disgusting but people just slather butter over like a you know a cutting board or a serving board and then they serve bread or something to dip in it i just saw one the other day that was like frosting like icing over a board served with blank sugar cookies to dip into it so you can make a, a board or a beautiful display out of anything that said if you are trying to do a cheese board or a charcuterie board there is like sort of a formula or like best practice for what types of cheeses and things to include so depending on the like number of cheeses you want to have um you know it's good to have kind of a variety so maybe like a soft cheese a hard cheese uh you know a sharp cheese a mild cheese um like a blue cheese and a very mild like fontina cheese so i try to have a good blend i also in the last year or so have tried doing like a centerpiece cheese so whereas in the past i might have just done a wedge of brie as one of my you know four or five cheeses now i'm doing like a central um like small circle of a brie or a soft cheese and kind of build out around that and then same thing with your meats, you know, it's good to have like a variety of different types of meats. And then there's all kinds of other accompaniments and things that you can serve this with. Um, usually I just focus on the cheeses and the meats, but you know, some people do a lot more with like fruits and spreads and garnishes and things. So here's what I have for tonight. My plans got a little bit thwarted because um, we actually just received this as a Christmas gift from my in-laws. So this has, I mean, this this already is a charcuterie or a cheese tray. Um, so it has, you can see there's four different types of cheese. There's a cheddar, so that will be a very sharp cheese. That's like a very aged cheddar. A mild blue cheese, a manchego, which is like a kind of a harder, maybe like a little bit salty or nutty cheese, and then a mild brie cheese. And they have it here with some nuts and some figs, and this looks like maybe dried cranberries. So I have this out because I might take the blue cheese from this and incorporate it into what I already had planned. But what I had planned on using for my cheese tray was starting with this Harbison. Um, this is a really nice soft cheese. It's from the Jasper Hill Farm, which I love all of their cheeses that I've tried. Um, I guess you can see by, you know, in comparison with my hand, like it's a pretty good sized um, little round cheese and what I do with this it, um, it's wrapped in a spruce bark band uh, which makes it very easy to just slice off the top layer of the rind and then it sort of becomes its own little bowl and you can like dip things in it or scoop stuff out and spread it 
So that will be kind of the centerpiece. And then I got this um, aged Gouda cheese. This is an 18 month aged Gouda. So that'll be kind of a stronger, maybe a little bit nuttier flavor. Then I have this Comte, which will be, um, this is definitely like a nutty kind of flavored cheese. Fontina, which will be much smoother. Actually, this says it's also mild and nutty, but okay. It's gonna be like a smoother, more um, subtle kind of flavor. And then we love using these little mini uh, mozzarella balls. I'll show you how I do those, but I'll just put them like in a small bowl on the tray. And there, I mean, obviously mozzarella is like a very fresh, um, mild, you know, different, and it'll, because they're in the liquid, you know, they're, they're very, um, moist, <laughs> but they'll, they'll be a very mild flavor to add to it. So if I add in the blue cheese from this, that will actually be six cheeses on here, which is quite a lot, but you'll see, I'm not gonna put like the whole thing of all these, I'll cut them up. And then I just have two types of meats. These actually, um, we use this combination for our Thanksgiving one and it's really nice. So this is um, Iberico chorizo, which is sort of like a little bit smoky, a little bit spicy, um, very, I don't wanna say fatty, but it's like very fatty and, and flavorful. I love using this one. This has always been a favorite of mine to use. And then we also have this Hungarian salami, which we just tried for the first time uh, at Thanksgiving. And it's so, it reminds you of Lebanon bologna, if there's any other uh, Pennsylvania <laughs> residents out there. Um, but it's a little smoky, a little sweet. It's This is really nice. And then for accompaniments, I love using different types of olives. So I thought this was interesting. It's like a couple types of olives mixed together, as well as some small peppers so um, I might I was thinking I might pull the peppers out and put them in like a separate thing but actually I'll probably keep it all together because I'm sure they've all kind of absorbed each other's flavors so we have those these are from Trader Joe's they are truffle Marcona almonds um, the almonds in this cheese tray are also Marcona almonds you can see they're just like a little different looking than your standard almond that you get like for you know baking or snacking um they're very uh oily they're very flavorful and the truffle ones have this nice you know rich earthy truffle flavor to them and then i have some red grapes uh, i do like to include some kind of fruit or vegetable or something fresh on the tray just so it isn't super heavy the whole time usually i like to put a couple like bunches of grapes but almost all of these grapes like fell off of their stems so i'll have to do something with a bunch of mostly loose grapes and then my last accompaniment i just sliced these up these are um, artichoke hearts usually i get like marinated artichoke hearts from the store and they didn't have any this time so these were just canned artichoke hearts and they were they were whole and i just cut them into halves um, if you do end up with canned ones you can buy them holes or um, you can find them in quarters and then you will probably want some crackers or bread or something to you know dip things with so um, i was going to use some other different crackers but actually we also just got these as a christmas gift so these are snack sized italian bruschetta toast so i'm going to use these something else that i like doing is basically make my own of these but if you get Get, um, you know like one of those little skinny baguettes that you get at the supermarket for like two dollars and slice it into little rounds like this just toast it you know briefly so they get a little crunchy and then take them out and while they're still warm rub each piece with just a clove of garlic like cut the end off a clove of garlic and rub that over them um, or do a garlic and then like a tomato um, just you know cut cut open and rubbed over them it gives it such a good extra flavor um, and it's so little effort but it's like so special um, but in this case we have these <laughs> already pre-made so I will probably serve these with it if we do need something else I have a couple types of crackers here as well so sometimes people ask me about like layout of a, a charcuterie board and I usually just say like oh I let the ingredients tell me where they want to be placed which is pretty much true but like I mentioned I want to make this cheese kind of the centerpiece so we at least know this much as far as placement so I'm just going to go ahead and slice off the top layer of this one um, now in the past I have tried um, saving the top 
kind of lid and um, if you had like a cute cookie cutter or something you could cut a shape out of it and then replace it on top of here so there would be kind of like a cutout design in the top rind I don't have any cute cookie cutters this thing always tears so I'm just gonna leave it like this so again it kind of just becomes its own little bowl for like scooping or dipping out of and I will just place this one in the middle of the tray since we at least know that's gonna be there and then for these other types of cheeses, you can just decide how you want to serve them. Um, I mean, plenty of times I've just put like a whole chunk of cheese onto the tray and, you know, people can use their knives and cut off the piece that they like. But what I usually like doing is cutting them up in some way to make them a little more easy to serve. So there's a few different things that you can do that I like. So for something like this Gouda, it's a hard cheese with a rind. Um, it has like a waxy rind that you wouldn't eat. So first of all, I'm just gonna cut this in half because we don't need this entire thing on the board. You saw how much cheese there is. So take half of it away to start. And then um, what I'll do for this one is I'll leave it whole, but I'll use one of my cheese serving tools to kind of break it up into chunks. Uh, a hard cheese like this kind of just chunks apart, like a, a Parmesan or any kind of like hard crumbly cheese would be good to do this with and you can kind of um, cut it away from the rind so I'll show you when it's on the board but basically the rind will just still be there kind of as an outline but the actual body of the cheese will be uh, chunked up and ready for someone to just um, break off a piece to take. Now for this fontina or any kind of cheese that comes in a wedge and makes like a triangle shape, um, I love making these into triangle zippers. So the first thing is this has a wax rind that just comes right off. So I'm first of all just going to kind of break that off. And then I'm just going to start cutting this into triangles. And then once you have all your triangles, you basically just... Um, alternate the direction that they're facing so that they form what's called a zipper pattern um, and I mean it looks nice but also it makes it a lot easier to pick up just one slice of cheese when they're kind of arranged like that so this isn't a ton it looks like they'll stand up on their own um, so I'll just stand this like this on the tray and then for this Comte um, it's also like a pretty be hard cheese um it's just in a rectangle so there's a number of things you could do with it you could just slice it up into rectangular slices you could do that and maybe like fan them out and do something pretty what i'm going to do with this is probably like cube it up into some small cubes um i also think like cheddar lends itself really nicely to being cubed or you know you see all the time in like commercial cheese trays like little cubes of cheddar or pepper jack or something so um th those types of cheeses i think lend themselves well to doing that also, the Comte has like a rind on two ends, and you can see, hopefully, there's sort of like a little um, difference in color between, you know, where the rind transitions into the soft center part of the cheese. I kind of prefer to cut this whole thing off, but what you could do is, you know, just cut it off of one end and then leave the other end on um, if you were going to cut it into rectangle slices and kind of use that edge. Actually, I might do it that way. Let me do it that way. There we go. I did choose to do it this way in slices because I do prefer cheese that's kind of more thinly sliced. Um, so I think that will probably just be a little tastier than cubing it. Now the other component that I like to do a little bit of prep work with is the meats. So there's all kinds of things you can do. Obviously, again, you could just lay them out. You could um, fold them in different ways. People make meat rivers where they sort of fold them together and have them sort of wind around um, all the other items that are on the board. Something that I have enjoyed doing ever since I learned how to do it is making salami roses or whatever type of meat roses that you're doing. And you will need a shot glass or some kind of small glass or circular thing that you can fold the pieces of meat over the edge. So it took me a little bit of trial and error to figure out how to do this, but um, basically you just start folding the meats 
over the edge of your glass and as you go around you create a layer on top of a layer on top of a layer and when you take it off of the glass it turns into sort of a rosebud looking thing and it's just a nice way to serve these. So depending on the size of the slices, you might need a little bit larger or smaller uh, opening on your glass. So again, a little bit of trial and error, but um, I like to do a few layers. And then when I uh, transition over to the board, I'll show you what this looks like when you take them off. I will also say this does work a little bit better if your meat has kind of um, had a chance to like come to room temperature. Uh, it just gets a little stickier, a little easier to fold around um, the lip of that glass. So it might be a little harder if you're just pulling things out of the fridge and starting to work with them. Um, but same with cheese, you know, it's usually tastier if you let it come to room temp. If you, you know, give yourself a little bit of a head start, let it sit out for a little bit. The only thing that I would say um, is better or easier with a cold ingredient is if you're gonna slice the top off of a soft cheese like I just did that probably would work better if you were um, letting it be a little colder and a little harder before you start so here's what we have so far for our board so again that centerpiece cheese we have four other types of cheeses arranged around it our meats I'm going to take the mozzarella balls, which I put in a little dish and kind of, you know, place them in one place. And then we also have little dishes for the artichoke carts and the olives. So I'll kind of, um, you know, arrange them around so they're sort of evenly spaced around. The other thing I wanted to demonstrate was what I'm planning to do with this Gouda. So um, this is just a cheese knife. I don't know, that works well for like breaking up hard cheeses like that. So you can see if you start just kind of going like this, it kind of crumbles apart. So I'm just going to start it and then, you know, as people serve themselves, they will just continue crumbling it. So for this one, since that knife goes with that, I'll kind of leave that resting in the corner. And then you may recall that there's a couple other items for our cheese board. So we have our sad grapes that almost all fell off of their vines. And I guess I'll just take some loose grapes. So the nice thing with like grapes and fruits and nuts is that you can just sort of fill in around the crevices and place them where you need. And I'll take some of our almonds. Again, these are also like very rich, so we don't need, you know, 10,000 almonds. But for things like this, um, I do like to put them, you know, in a couple spots. Again, kind of to, to break up the tray and to sort of just fill in the gaps. So here is our finished board for our dinner tonight. I've already taken an overhead photo, which is what I like to post on social media. But just to give a little tour, we have that um, Jasper Hill Harbison, which is our nice soft cheese in the middle. We have the Comte, kind of nutty over here, just cut into thin slices. The aged Gouda back here, crumbled up and ready for further crumbling. The mild blue cheese up here in the front with the mozzarella balls, also nice and mild. And the Fontina, also kind of mild. And then I've made little roses with the Iberico chorizo and the uh, Hungarian salami, which I can smell it already. It smells so nice and smoky. And then also in these little bowls, we have our little olive mix, the um, baby artichoke carts, and then kind of filling in the gaps, I have our loose grapes. Again, usually I like to keep them in little small bunches, but they pretty much all fell off the stems. So loose grapes and our almonds, and then kind of spread throughout are the crackers. Um, I have plenty more crackers. A lot of people also like to do maybe like along the sides. I did just want to mention that this isn't as like totally packed full and lush as a lot of the, you know, social media influencer uh, charcuterie boards. And, you know, I also had to be realistic. We are two 
human beings and we're probably not even gonna eat all this this is a lot of cheese so um, you know we'll probably already be packing up leftovers of this so I just didn't want to put out like a ton of stuff that we weren't even gonna finish but hopefully you found this interesting and maybe inspirational if you do make a cheese board or a charcuterie board I would love to see it so you know if you post it on social media just tag me Vola Geek and I will come check it out thank you so much for watching hopefully I didn't leave you too hungry and I will see you next time bye